It was like this, or maybe like that. But there is no question of perhaps or maybe. There is a specific plan being carried out in this material world. What is this plan? This cosmic manifestation is a, cha is a chance for the conditioned souls to go back home, back to Godhead. Back home. As long as they have the domineering mentality which makes them try to lure it over material nature, they are conditioned. But everyone who has who can understand the plan of the Supreme Lord and cultivate Krishna consciousness is most intelligent. The creation and destruction of the cosmic manifestation are under the superior guidance of God. Thus, the battle of Kurukshetra was fought according to the plan of God. Arjuna was refusing to fight, but he was told that he should fight and at the same time desire the Supreme Lord. Then he would be happy. If one is full, if one is in full Krishna consciousness, and if his life is devoted to his transcendental service, he is then perfect. So, the word that Krishna calls Arjuna by, it's a very nice name. He calls him Sabya Sachin, which means someone very expertly. We are all very expert, capable people. So, in a way, Krishna's, we could also be called Sabya Sachin. The, the thing is that the capacity for us to become a medium for Krishna's plan will make us Sabhisachi. If we can make ourselves available to Krishna's plan, you know, if we can become Nimitta Matra or the vehicle for Krishna's desires to manifest, then we are expert. Expert shooters of arrows. <laughs> I mean, I think there's so much poetry in this verse because it's not just arrows we're talking about, like bow and arrow, you know. I think there's many kinds of arrows we can be shooting. For example, right now, these arrows of Bhagavad Gita are shooting into the meshes and darkness of our Maya, you know. And <laughs> So in that way, you know, these these um, these things are very applicable for each one of us. And uh, when we when we can understand that we're just we're just the medium for Krishna's plan, then we can actually be a little bit more detached because it's not our plan. We're not that we were. This is Krishna's plan, which is it. So. Whatever the the uh, consequence is going to be, it's not it's not ours to be strung up on or, or you know stuck up on or stressed out on because the result is in Krishna's hands. I uh, I had a very good discussion with Guru Guru about this this. Uh, Of, of slaughter is just unstoppable. 
So what's the point? So Grimmer said something that was just, just, I'll never forget that. He said, the point is not to stop the tide of time or the flow of, of Kali Yuga. Because Kali Yuga itself is Krishna's plan. Kali Yuga has no power without Krishna's sanction. So it's not that we're going to do something to change the planet, because that's not in our, in our hands. The, the, the only thing we can do is take the opportunity to serve and do whatever we possibly can to please Krishna with that particular service. And you gave the example of Jatayu. He said, Jatayu, Jatayu literally means the old, you know, the one with age. It was an old eagle and a great devotee of Lord Ram. And because he is he'd been waiting his whole age, you know, for this opportunity to serve, he, when he saw that Ravana was taking off with Sita, and, uh, you know, Sita was calling out for her help, immediately Jatayu was like, yes, finally, this is my chance. This is my chance to actually, you know, do some, some service that will please my Lord. He knew that there was no chance to, to beat Ravana, because Ravana was, was probably the biggest, you know, gangster of the time, you can say. <laughs> you know, he wasn't good at it. He was just one old guy, you know. He knew that there was no way I'm going to be able to, you know, stop Ravana. But nonetheless, Jatayu took that opportunity to serve, and he went for it. He went for it with his life and soul, the last little bit left of his, you know, body. And he just, at least he knocked his crown off. And, uh, you know, <laughs> gave Ravan a little bit of the run for his money. You know, meantime, Sita Devi could throw a few things off the, the chariot and so on, you know, some jewelry that, that you know, led a trail for Rudram to find. But, he's, but the essence of the, the story is that because of Jatayu's offering of, of love, you know, even though he knew that the result was going to be death, <laughs> he knew it. It's not like he had any presumptions that his service was going to change the world. Um, because of that, by glorious death, Jatayu, he, he, he was on the lap of Swayam Bhagavan Sri Ram, looking eye to eye as tears are rolling down from his eyes. And the Lord himself has is, is got tears in his eyes of appreciation that how, you know, you, you knowingly you've offered your life to me. He knew that there was, there was no chance that you could defeat Rama. But that offering of love is what Krishna is looking for. He doesn't, he's not looking for grand palaces and huge accomplishments. <laughs> it's, because that's not going to impress him. You know, he's the one who accomplishes <laughs> the most. So we don't come to him with any big, you know, show of that sort. And uh, so in that, in that way, he said, just, we're not here to change the world. We just need to serve a few cows. <laughs> just serve a few cows, just because that service will please Krishna. And that is the goal of our life, just to be a medium of some sort of service. Like Shri in the last sentence of the sentence, Prabhupada says, if one is in full Krishna consciousness, and if his life is devoted, to his transcendental service, then he is perfect. That's it. We are in full consciousness. What is our consciousness? That we want to please Krishna. That's it. And we offer a life in service, whatever, whatever possible service we can do. Then our life is perfect. It's so simple. We're not here to change the world. <laughs> We're not here to change the tide of time. We're not here to 
bring huge, big accomplishments to, to Krishna. It would be very nice if we can. Yeah, of course, Mishababali was incredible. But if you can't do what he did, still it's not like Krishna's not going to be pleased. You know, the, the story of, of uh, the little squirrel and Lord Ram, you know, I love that story because it just goes to show that the little guys get more mercy. <laughs> you know, all the, all the great big, big sevaks of Lord Ram, Aman, Angad, you know, Sukriva, and these guys are lifting mountains for the Lord. And, you know, the little squirrel, he's also trying his best. He's still, you know, rolling in some dust and, you know, trying to bring some sand over it, <laughs> whichever way he can. And, uh, you know, he attracts attention on around, says, bring him to me. And in great affection, he's caressing the little squirrel. And all the kids in the big, big sailors are a little bit jealous, you know, like, excuse me. I've been lifting mountains here. I never got one of those you know, loving, you know, uh, you know, patting going on. So it, it, it's it's not how big our seva is. It's just the, the mood of the half of service to please the Lord. And that's that's why Krishna says, you know, you take one step and I'll take ten. You just, he says, you know, start, do something. Just start it. And I'll help you. I'll finish it off. You know, so I feel like in our seva, in our journey in bhakti, we have to really strive to become a, a medium of, of, uh, this mood of service. Because, you know, everywhere else we look, it's just, every, there's no mood of service, it's just <laughs> me, 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 how do I get something out of this? You know, this material world is so full of it. Everyone trying to uh, get some kind of enjoyment out of any relationship situation, any interaction for that matter. So to be that vessel of Krishna's service and share bhakti, share the mood of Vaishnava, which is just always to, how can I serve? How can I be here for the other? This is really something that is very, very special. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's not even there in other yoga paths. Even in other yoga paths, you can be really a big Ashtanga yogi, but you, know, you don't necessarily want to go out of your way to go to the subway station and sing the holy name for the upliftment of those suffering jivas. You know, while people are staring at you weirdly, but you don't want to go out there and just read books. You know, even though 50 guys are going to say no, your ego, your ego is going to be pulverized. <laughs> you know, but you'll still go out there because. That's the mood of service. So the yogis, you know, they just want to find their nice zen garden and chill in their really beautiful, nice breath work and be de-stressed and just really like, ah, oh, that was so wow. You know, that's yeah, everyone wants to do that. <laughs> that's great. Wonderful. <laughs> you know, who doesn't want to just tap out and just let's go for a little vacation, you know, but who, who goes out of their way to, to, you know, suffer for others? Like Shri Baba, age 70, he didn't have to leave Shri Baba Khan, you know, and go all the way out on a boat with no money, no connections, no nothing, it was straight up, it was, uh, I mean, death call for a 70 year old man to go, to go on a ship across the Atlantic. So, you know, that's, that's definitely not the 
enjoyment moment that anybody has. It's it's definitely the joy of being the medium of Krishna's message, Krishna's you know love to share with the world and to you know someone or other bring some light in this dark sansara of I, me, and mine. You know. <coughs> so therefore, I mean, you know, when Krishna says, therefore, get up and fight, I don't, you know, okay, there's so many words here. We're not, obviously, we're not talking about, like, just getting into fight. He's talking about fight Maya, you know, this, this, uh, um, dark, I mean, suffering that, that is, you know, one with this mood of, of being the enjoyer of all that you see. And then what does it say? After conquering your enemies, you'll flourish, you enjoy a flourishing kingdom. I mean, of course, our enemies, the devotee doesn't have any enemies. He's supposed to Which means there's just, there was not an enemy that was born to him. So which enemy is he, is he talking about for the devotee? We have so many, you know, own personal growths that we can, you know, see, you know, that we can consider those as our enemies. Lust, anger, greed, pride, you know, things that we want to be careful of. It's not that the devotee might have them necessarily, but he still is careful. He doesn't want to get into the He's the big, you know, shot and everyone's bound to, because then that will get to the head eventually. So he's considering that as a possible enemy, you know? And then he says, you'll enjoy a flourishing kingdom. And you wonder which kingdom that is. <laughs> so, I'd say it's more like a queendom. <laughs> yes. You know, so we can eventually enter that, that realm of Raj Shidunana. And he says that, you know, they're already put to death by my arrangement. What's my arrangement? That none of these, none of these so-called enemies are actually part of us. They, 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 they're not part of the jiva. Jiva is Satchidananda man. He doesn't. He's, he's lost anger, ego, um, duality, conflict. These are all coverings of Maya. They don't really. They're not really our essence. Their self put upon. And um, when we really do become self realized, then we understand that they are all already dead by the arrangement of Krishna. <laughs> they were never there. They were never there. It was a, a superimposition of our attachment to Maya. To this material world, it gives us this this necessity to to uh, have pride, to have anger, to have ego, because it's, it's suffering, it's, it's frustrating. You're gonna get angry, you're gonna get you know attached, you're gonna get you know clingy. Yeah? When, you, when you don't have something, you know you're gonna, you're gonna get attached to it. In this way, all these all these you know. Um, External um, denominations of the soul are put to death by Krishna. He says, but O Sadhisachin, O expert one, or expert, he's like he's actually praising Arjuna. He's saying, You're very expert, you can do this. Come on, you got it. You know, it's like really encouraging. He says, Just become an instrument of mine. This, what, is, what is an instrument of mine? It's an instrument of the truth. Krishna, and Krishna represents the truth. He's personification of the truth. So if we can become an instrument, instrument of the truth, love, you know, bhakti, seva, then we are an instrument of Krishna. Sri Prabhupada said, purity is the force. There's no 
option to it. If we're not pure from within, we'll never become an instrument of Krishna. There cannot be cheating, duplicity, and truth in the same conversation. They're two opposites. So in order to in order to be a medium of Krishna, who is personification of truth, if you can imagine all the truth in this cosmos, just imagine it and just concentrate all of that truth. And it takes a form. <laughs> that would be Krishna. He is literally, he, he is Satyam Param Dhimani, as Bhagavatam says. The first verse of Bhagavatam says, Satyam Param Dhimani. Let's meditate upon him, he who is the truth personified, Sri Krishna. So when there is, we're talking about the truth, and there can absolutely be no delicious nature. Sincere, sincerity is the key, and purity is the force. So in these with these two, purity and sincerity, um, prerequisites to, to being instruments of Krishna. Yeah, I, I think this, this verse was actually Bhagavan's favorite verse, so that's why I thought <laughs> it would be a nice verse to share. Because it's, uh, Krishna is really, I, I can feel like he's, he's being a big brother or like a father. Well, since it's Arjuna, he's being like a big brother, like a friend, you know. He's, he's like, Sadhya Sachi, you're an expert. Come on, you're an expert. You know, Bozeman, come on, you can do this. Just become a medium of mine, you know, and stand and fight. Don't, don't have any doubts. You know, don't get all wishy-washy. I know we don't, we don't like violence. I also don't like violence. But here, we need to stand up for the truth. We need to fight. So, I think we can take something, each one of us, from this person, bring it into our daily, Take the question. Yes, but if you have any inspirations, any shares, any questions, let's go for it. So, um, sometimes as a devotee, Konishta devotee, not Madhva Madhikari or Uttam Madhikari, uh, we, we, we just think like, oh, Krishna didn't let me do it. If Krishna wanted, maybe I'll improve myself or something. So we just looking at Krishna's hand. Um, is that a good way, or I have to in the track? Well, Prabhu, you're right. Nothing happens without Krishna's will. This is also the truth. Especially with bhakti, you don't get devotional service without Krishna's sanction. Bhakti is a direct gift to us. The fact that we are even able to do the service is by His will. It's not by our action. But at the time, we also have to make a genuine effort. You know, like, we have to be that best that then Krishna will enter into. You know, like, He said, become my instrument of mine. So we need to definitely follow those basic principles of truth, of sincerity, you know. In, when I say sincerity, it, it's important to know that sincerity is 
Sincere people make mistakes, but it's not purposely. We try our best, and that's all that matters. We try our best, and we are honest. We don't, we don't do things knowingly. We don't do things knowingly wrong. It's not like, and Krishna is in the Paramahansa, he's, he's in the heart. We cannot escape. <laughs> You're going to be like, try to fool yourself, you know? So, in that way, as long as we're sincere and honest to ourselves, then we will eventually be given the opportunity to serve. It might not happen immediately, you know, because this is a great gift. To be able to be engaged in devotional service to Krishna is the greatest gift. So it's not that easy. You should understand that. It's not that easy to get. So if you're not getting it, no problem. Keep on chanting. Keep praying harder and harder. That please, my dear Lord, Sri Prabhupada said when we chant, we're constantly praying to Krishna that please engage me in your devotional service. Please engage me in some seva. So I'm going to please you. So, yeah, you know, I, I hope that answered the question. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Thank you, Shana. Yeah. 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 Yeah.